All right, so let's talk about, is it too late to retire or not? And kind of get into that a little bit. So let's start with our first question. So if you were someone in your 40s or your 50s, is it too late to retire? Well, the answer honestly is yes and no. Let me explain both. Hold on, we'll get to it there. <laughs> the answer is actually yes and no. Is it too late? Yes, if you're going to go the traditional route. Because the traditional route was designed a long time ago, way back when pensions were a thing and a lot of other things like that. And you had to basically start in your 20s contributing to your retirement in order to actually get there. So it's designed for you to start contributing, you know, in your 20s. And then when you hit 65, Social Security clicks in, um, you know, obviously your pension. Way back in the day, you had pensions. Most people don't have pensions nowadays. All those sort of things happened. And on top of that, hey, in the 80s, start contributing to your 401k. That was kind of the deal there. And oh, by the way, you know, if you aren't, you know, you're sitting around in your 40 or in your 50s, and you have, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000 in your 401k, and you don't have a pension, there's really not a way to bridge that gap. You can do the math. The math basically shows you're not getting there. But the reason why I said it's not too late is because there is a way to actually retire in five years. It just requires you making massive changes to your life and viewing retirement differently. If you're going to go the traditional route, the way we've all been taught and the way the system set up and what's considered normal and all that other stuff like that, you're right. If you're in your 40s and 50s, it's going to be incredibly tough, but there is a way to do it a lot sooner than that. And it quickly is five years. I've actually got examples of folks that have actually done it quicker than that, but it does require you to completely think you got to get everything that you've ever been taught out of your head and view it completely differently. So you said you have to view it differently. What changes would people need to make to make this happen? Well, nobody wants to hear it, but you spend too much money. That's the reality of it. Uh, I know everybody says, oh, the economy, this inflation, all these other things of that nature. The reality is you spend too much money. And let me give kind of a example here. I'm not saying that inflation, a lot of other things aren't uh, involved in that. But when people actually sit down, do a money audit, they actually go through all their finances. I tend to find when I do it with somebody, I find thousands of dollars worth of fluff that people think, oh, that was only $20 here. That was only $50 here. Oh, well, that's just, uh, you know, a couple times a week we do that. Whatever the case is. Point being, it adds up to thousands of dollars at the end of every month. So that's kind of the first piece. The second piece is, you know, I can afford any car I want. I can buy a Ferrari and drive whatever I want. I, you know, I drive an old beat up used car because it doesn't matter. I don't know who I'm trying to show off to, but yet folks will justify buying the most expensive car possible. And more importantly, you know, back in the eighties, people only had one car and somehow, even though two spouses may have worked, they figured out how to, you know, drop each other off at work make it work back then, you know, all of a sudden I got teenage kids, they need a car. Do they really need a car? You know, there was a time when the family shared the whole car. I'm not saying that's plausible in all scenarios at all. But usually when I sit down, and I look at the reality of their financials. You don't need two Lexuses, you know, regardless of what you make, you don't need a Mercedes in this, you know, your kid doesn't need a $20,000 used car. You know, they can deal with it. We all grew up with old beat up <laughs> used cars that were pieces of junk, you know, as part of the experience of getting to drive. We didn't care. I was just glad I could get out of the house. So there are a lot of different ways, but it requires large things like that in order to happen. But most folks don't even want to face the reality. They just spend too much money in general. And they will then immediately, usually when I challenge that, they'll say, well, but my friend over here, my coworker does this, my friend does that. And I'm like, oh, cool. Your friend is in a hole <laughs> and is never going to get out of it. They're going to work forever. That is the reality of what's going to happen with most folks. You know, we're seeing it right now with the boomers uh, and I'm not knocking older folks or the older generations or anything else, but it's kind of sad whenever you go to, you know, I, I'll give you an example, traveling on Christmas Eve last year to go visit family. You know, I don't remember what it was, six o'clock in the morning or so. And the airport's completely dead on Christmas Eve. And every single worker there at all the food places was elderly. There's not a chance in the world you can tell me that was their plan was to be working in an airport on Christmas Eve instead of being with their family. It's not. And that's across the board. Every time I go, you know, used to go to Lowe's and Home Depot <laughs> way back when I first got into real estate and it was a normal mix of employees. Now it is almost exclusively older folks. We're seeing it more and more and more and more in retail places. Why? Because they're aging out of the professional workplace. And they're still having to supplement the retirement either through part-time work or through full-time work because they have to live. And unfortunately, Social Security is not going to get you there. So since the way we've always been taught retirement works doesn't really work, is there an alternative way? Yeah, I actually, there's three of them. Uh, there's probably more than this, but there's a big three that I actually, you know, like to use or I like to point to. 
um, that you can go into and actually create that retirement as quickly as, you know, five years. Like I said, I, I, we actually have group members that and my other uh, group from my other channel that have actually done it, you know, in a year or so all the way around. Yeah. Now they had some advantages. Some other folks may or may not have, uh, but nonetheless, the execution of it still works. So the first one would be um, currency arbitrage, essentially, you know, going to another country. Okay. And then, of course, the dollar versus a lot of other currencies is a lot, um, you know, a lot better. So you get a lot more bang for your buck. A lot of other places there's, you know, U.S. cost of living in the U.S. is not cheap, right. to say the least. The second one would be lean living. And then the third one would be self-sustainable living. Okay. And those are kind of the three different main buckets that I've seen so far. Again, there's more, but those are the three that I have experience with that. I know folks that are actually doing it and living it. And actually can put numbers to each one of those to see exactly how it works. And they, they've proven out they work in terms of creating an alternative retirement. Okay. So can you explain each one of them just a little bit so that they make more sense? Without getting too deep, because these are not complex subjects, but there's a lot to them. We'd be here for two hours talking about each one. Um, currency arbitrage, using the dollar against another currency to create your retirement. You see it all the time. People moving to Southeast Asia. Um, you can actually do it in parts of Europe, if you can believe that obviously South America. So it's a lot of, there's a lot of nuance within that. There's a lot of, um, misconceptions with that. More importantly, that a lot of folks have, um, I hate to say it. And especially it's, it, it's my age and above, you know, it's us older folks that have all the misconceptions, you know, I know, I know it's how it works though. It, it legitimately is that these areas, when we heard that stuff, it was 40 years ago. Well, the world's a completely different place in 40 years. Just think about you know, pre-World War II, post-World War II America. Totally different places, totally different standings in the world order, totally different everything. You know, We were dying country into the Great Depression. 40 years later, we're the biggest superpower in the world. Uh, that's how much can change in 40 years. And so a lot of things have changed across the world, but the currency hasn't yet. So there's still opportunity there to do that. So that's kind of currency arbitrage. Lean living is, you see it popular among young folks, and as much as we like to criticize young folks, they got this one right. You don't need, you know, if you want to try, retire the traditional way, you know, you need anywhere from one and a half million to $3 million. I think uh, some of the big finance people out there in the space that have been out in the space for a long, long time, you're, you know, your Susie Ormans, people like that are saying it's getting close to $4 million now. Well, I know folks that retired in their thirties with 500,000. So essentially they're just cutting their living expenses. They don't need the big house and the big cars and everything else. They're going to live close to work or they're going to work for themselves and just need less in general in order to do that. So it, it's a different type. Yeah. I, I'm not saying you got to live in a van. I know that's what everybody goes to. You got to live in a van. No, you don't necessarily have to live in a van in order to take advantage of this, but there is a way to live a lot cheaper than what you are right now in order to get yourself there or live in a cheaper area, take a different job um, in order to live in a cheaper area, a lot of different ways like that. So that's kind of that piece. And then the self-sustainable piece, is those folks who have decided, hey, I'm going to live off my own land. They decide to they have a job, whatever it is, but they're going to live just outside of town. They're going to buy a bunch of land. They're going to, you know, they do the chickens and the uh, farming and all that sort of stuff like that. You know, grow your own vegetables, stuff like that. Uh, which look at the grocery bill. You know, the average grocery bill is expensive right now across the board. Imagine, and on top of that, the food's better for you. So you're probably going to live longer and the food's better for you. Uh, but depending upon how far down that rabbit hole you choose to go, a lot of those folks live on very, very little because, hey, you, you know, you're getting your energy for free. You're, you, you know, you have a source for basically all your needs that you need in life are provided for you based upon what you have there. Now, it's a lot more complex than that. There's a lot to it. Um, it's not necessarily something I would ever want to do. You know, I'm sorry, I'm not raising chickens or uh, <laughs> anything else like that. But that appeals to a lot of folks and having that kind of land and being away from big city life, from a lot of the other stuff in the world creates the type of environment to where somebody might very well enjoy that own retirement and really, really enjoy being able to live out there, live off the land, and more importantly, not need $4 million in order to live a great life. So those, that's kind of a base level on all those. Obviously, there's a lot more to them. So to answer your question in the end and to answer the question, are you able to retire it? Basically, is it too late or not? The answer is absolutely not but you have to change your mentality. You have to change your mindset around it and look at these other alternatives. It's not pretty, but you know what? Everybody else saying, oh, don't do that. You know, just stick with it. Those are the same exact folks, you know, that are going to be working when they're 70, 80 and until they die. If you don't want to be that person, you're going to have to break away from them. Otherwise you're going to be in the same exact boat as them. So yes, it is possible. <laughs>